we shall uh, get ahead with the main focus of the course which is uh, statistical mechanics. And um, uh, once again we ask this question that uh, if thermodynamics has been successful in giving us um, the parameters, the basic parameters of the system such as pressure, volume, temperature and maybe the density of particles, then why do we need statistical mechanics? Statistical mechanics is needed in order to understand the internal structure of the system. That is how uh, different particles are um, arranged in different available energy levels so as to give us uh, the pressure that we get or the volume that we get or the temperature that we get. Okay? So, it gives a total description of uh, the system and um, uh, thermodynamics actually deals with very few uh, parameters and uh, that is why the study is simple but the scopes are limited whereas uh, statistical mechanics uh, supplements what is not answered by uh, the thermodynamic uh, either the laws or the uh, variables in totality there uh, you know the explanation is not uh, completely given by thermodynamics. So, we will start with uh, statistical analysis and uh, what we mean by statistical analysis is that uh, that we will learn how to deal with uh, statistical uh, systems that is a large number of systems. In fact, uh, a priori I should tell you that uh, the results of uh, statistical mechanics uh, is going to be flawed if the number of systems or the number of entities or the number of data points are uh, small. In fact, we need large number of data points and um, in order for uh, to make a, a statistical interpretation and um, the statistical analysis will uh, mainly do it on two problems. Uh, they are shown here, uh, there is a random walk problem uh, that you see here um, and there is a coin tossing problem and uh, the random walker, uh, assumably a drunken man, uh, he starts from a landmark say on the road and uh, he uh, places a step on the right and uh, on the left with uh, you know uh, distinct probabilities and uh, each step he takes um, on the right or on the left they are statistically independent of each other. And uh, the only constraint that we are making is that uh, he uh, takes equal uh, the step sizes are of equal uh, length L. And um, so, the direction of each step taken is randomly either to the right or to the left with uh, probabilities p and q respectively. Okay? So, uh, he takes a, a step to the right with a probability p and he takes a step to the left with a probability q. Uh, we ask this question, what is the probability that the position of the man after n steps is x equal to ml? Okay? Uh, where m is a number and it denotes here it denotes the difference between uh, the right and the left steps taken by the man. And uh, the coin tossing problem should be more familiar to uh, anyone who has done uh, probability. So, it is a tossing of a coin yields either head or tail with equal probability which means with half probability. So, we ask this question what is the RMS and the average value um, of our average values of uh, h minus t that is head minus tail obtained uh, in um, this experiment of tossing coins after n such tossings. And um, interestingly we will see that these two problems have uh, common outcomes. So, there is a, a schematic of a drunken man as you say uh, that he is taking steps to the left or to the right on this landscape. Uh, there is a lamp post just to sort of uh, tell his uh, with respect to what we should measure. And um, so, we ask this question what is the nature of the path when the walker has uh, taken n steps and this at random uh, to the right and to the left uh, with probabilities uh, for the right step is a probability is p and for the left step the probability is q. The peculiarity of the paths is this is a priori let me state the results. Uh, a small portion of the path looks exactly identical to a bigger path. So, uh, what I mean is that if you look at a small portion say here uh, that is going to look at uh, identical to something which is looked at a bigger scales 
and uh, this is a very interesting phenomena and we will see that um, uh, later that close to phase transitions uh, you know uh, we are familiar with a large number of phase transitions such as paramagnet to ferromagnet, water to uh, ice or uh, water to vapor and so on and so forth, superconductor to metal say for example. And um, this uh, phenomena where the uh, small portion looks identical to a much larger portion is uh, called as scale invariance. When they start looking same, uh, it uh, says that it is uh, this called scale invariant. In fact, if you think of uh, a paramagnet, uh, then it looks different uh, at all length scales, which means that uh, in a certain region of a paramagnet, there could be uh, some uh, uh, more spins pointing up than pointing down. And if you go to another region or a bigger region, uh, you will see that uh, there are more down spins that as compared to up and so on and so forth. Uh, but um, when uh, the system undergoes a transition to a ferromagnetic phase either as a function of uh, the applied field or by redu reducing temperature, uh, then uh, these all the spins are pointing up. So, if you look at 5 spins or if you look at 5000 spins or 50,000 or 5 million, it really does not matter, they all uh, look same. Uh, that is called a scale invariance and this uh, scale independent behavior, uh, it gives a universal uh, uh, property which is called as a universality to the system uh, which uh, would be discussed when we uh, talk about phase transitions. And uh, uh, these uh, self similar or the scale invariant objects are uh, also called as uh, fractals uh, because of the fractional dimensionality will not elaborate that, but let me um, show it via this uh, animation. So, you see that uh, uh, this is a zooming out and you are, or rather zooming in and you are seeing these uh, kind of structures, they are appearing at all length scales. So, for the first half of the uh, video, it will zoom in and will go closer and closer to this. And as you come closer, each of these uh, structures that you see here, this mushrooming structure, they would look exactly the same. So, uh, and uh, it is not only for uh, zooming in, it will happen for zooming out as well, which is just uh, what we are going to see in a while. So, now it will zoom out and um, it is probably self explanatory that it is going to look the same. So, now you see the same structure is appearing as you are zooming out and uh, these are uh, same at all length scales uh, in the of the problem. And uh, these are called fractal structure um, or self similar structure and there are many examples of fractals. Uh, you can have fractals at the seashore, uh, you can have fractals, uh, you can make fractals, a uh, fractal structure which are called as Koch's curve and so on. Okay. All right. So, uh, the, all these are fine, these uh, look nice and so on and we understand what is meant by scale invariance. But what is the main question, uh, physics question that we are asking in this regard? Uh, one of them can be uh, said as this that if we add n vectors of equal length, but in random directions. Okay. Uh, and ask for the probability that the resultant vector after adding n of them uh, has a certain magnitude and direction. So, this is the question that we ask and what are the examples of such a physical phenomena? The magnetism is one such uh, phenomena where we talk about n particles each one with magnetic moments m equal to plus half or minus half which can either point in the up direction or the down direction. So, we ask the question what is the net magnetic moment of the system which is same as what we have asked earlier that if you add them vectorially uh, where do you go and land as compared to your initial configuration. So, what is the net magnetic moment of the system. Uh, diffusion this is um, in the Drude's theory that a uh, particle or here we are talking about a molecule. Uh, randomly moves after a collision. So, between two such collisions they uh, drift like free particles and um, when they come and collide and after collision they uh, uh, move in all possible 
randomly in all possible directions. So, uh, the question is that how far uh, is it likely to go after n such collisions and that should be uh, related to conductivity and so on. So, let me uh, now do this uh, random walk problem and uh, So, once again to remind you that uh, there is a uh, drunken man or a drunkard who is taking uh, randomly steps to from uh, towards the right and towards the left with uh, probabilities uh, uh, p and q respectively. Okay. So, uh, he takes uh, n steps, n steps each statistically independent. independent and um, of length L. So, each step size is L and uh, he takes um, n of them uh, with probabilities. Uh, so, P denotes the probability to take a right step and q denotes the probability to take a left step. And they are independent of each other. Okay. And uh, so, we ask this question that uh, uh, after n steps, uh, what is the probability that the man is at a location given by x equal to m l, l is the as I said is a each step length and m is an integer. And m essentially is a uh, difference between the right uh, steps taken uh, minus uh, or the difference between the right and the left steps taken. Okay. So, n 1 is the number of uh, right steps taken after capital N steps and n 2 is the number of left steps taken this automatically fixes capital N equal to N 1 plus N 2 and M which is a, a difference between that is N 1 minus N 2 okay. or, or it could be N 2 minus N 1, but just uh, without any loss of generality we are taking it to be uh, N 1 to be greater than N 2, but it could be uh, n 1 could be also less than n 2 uh, in which case m would be negative. So, uh, if we use this then we can write down this um, m as 2 n 1 minus n. Okay. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, one um, small observation is that uh, if n is odd, m is odd and if n is even, m is even. So, um, m a uh, small m and capital N they follow each other in terms of uh, being even or being odd. All right. So, um, we know of this already. Now, um, as I said that the uh, probability of taking a right step is statistically independent with that of uh, taking a let left step. So, um, probability of taking n 1 left steps with probability of p
and uh, the probability of uh, n 2 uh, right steps with probability q is uh, given by uh, p to the power n 1 uh, q to the power n 2 and so on. Okay. Uh, so, suppose that he has taken uh, two steps uh, then there is a possibility that and since they are independent so it is p into q and if he has taken two uh, steps towards right and one step towards left it will be p to the power p square into q and so on. So, that is why for n 1 left steps uh, and n 2 right steps and because they are uh, statistically independent we can write the uh, probability to be uh, the multiplication of the two. But there is more to it because uh, how we can um, arrange n 1 uh, and n 2 uh, so as to make it n. Okay. So, this is given by uh, there are many possible ways uh, the possible ways the distinct possible ways of taking n 1 and n 2 steps to make a total n is uh, that is the distribution which is given by n factorial, n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial and so on. So, uh, let me just uh, for a moment uh, consider uh, capital N to be 3. So, if capital N to be 3 then n 1, n 2 and m uh, they this can be 3, 0. So, this will be like um, 3, uh, this could be like 2, 1, this could be like uh, 1, this could be 1, 2, minus 1 or 0, 3, uh, minus uh, 3 and so on. So, these are the th uh, different ways of uh, uh, arranging or rather finding n 1 and n 2 uh, giving rise to a total uh, capital N of 3. So, this is that probability. So, uh, the probability of taking uh, n steps the total probability rather of taking n 1 steps to right and n 2 steps to left is the uh, probability let us call it as p n n 1 n 2 is just a notation you can use your own notation is n factorial divided by n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial and p to the power n 1 and q to the power n 2. Okay. So, this is the probability that we uh, the man had taken capital N steps with n 1 uh, randomly towards the right and n 2 randomly towards the left with uh, probabilities p and q and this is called as a binomial distribution. All right. So, uh, we know the formula for binomial uh, distribution. So, uh, we can write it as uh, p plus q whole to the power n is equal to sum of n equal to 0 to n and then we have a n factorial divided by n factorial uh, small n factorial n minus capital N minus small n factorial p to the power n q to the power n minus n. Okay. Uh, so, this is the binomial distribution you can easily check it for say a cube for example uh, or to the power 4. So, you will get these coefficients like for example, we know p plus q whole square equal to p square plus uh, 2 p q plus q square and uh, so all these coefficients will be given by this factor and then you have these uh, p's powers of p's and q's. Okay. So, uh, if we use now uh, instead of carrying on with n 1 and n 2 for these steps uh, to the right and to the left, uh, we can alternatively carry with uh, capital N and M. So, use them instead and that can be easily done because your n 1 
equal to half of capital N plus small m and N2 is equal to half of capital N minus small m. So, we have replaced uh, this quantity as you see here P n n 1 n 2 we have now uh, replaced it by P n m and uh, this can be written as uh, P n m is equal to n factorial divided by half of uh, n plus m factorial uh, half of n minus m factorial sorry let me close the bracket and then of course, we have p to the power n plus m by 2 and q to the power n minus m by 2. Okay. As I said a capital N is positive definite number some number which is large and m could be either positive or negative. Okay. So, um, now we ask the question what is average of m. So, what is the average number of steps taken towards right by the man. That is what is n 1 average. Okay. Now, this is the probability distribution that you see here. Okay. So, this is the probability distribution or this is the probability and we want to calculate the average number. Now, uh, you understand that if you have uh, uh, are doing a few uh, subjects, we each one has some weightage which means that the credits are called weightage. Suppose, you are doing three subjects say for example, A, B and C. Uh, they could be statistical physics, mathematical physics and quantum mechanics and this has a weight say 4, this has a weight say uh, 6 and this has a weight say 2. So, the average uh, grade will be uh, A uh, whatever the, you, uh, the grade you get suppose you get a, a grade. So, let me change this nomenclature from uh, uh, A, B, C to P, Q, R. And so, these are the three subjects uh, statistical physics, mathematical physics and uh, quantum mechanics. So, in uh, P you get a grade uh, A which means it is equal to 10 and in subject Q you get a B grade which means it is equal to 8 and in subject uh, R uh, you get a grade say again uh, equal to say B which is equal to 8. So, your uh, average grade or the grade for that particular semester is going to be 10 into 4 because you got a, a 10 in a 4 credit course and 8 into 6 plus uh, 2 into uh, 8 divided by all these uh, total credits which are 4 plus 6 plus 2 which is 12. So, this will give you your average grade and uh, so, this is equal to 40 plus uh, 48 that is uh, 88 plus uh, 16 which is equal to 104 by 12 and whatever it comes so that is going to be your average grade. So, we are asking this question what is the average number of uh, steps taken towards right which we know is uh, there if he has taken n, st n 1 steps towards right. So, the average of n 1 is n 1 bar and uh, the probability distribution which is uh, uh, analogous to the credit uh, of the course is given by this boxed expression which is P uh, of uh, n uh, m. Okay. And we have to calculate n 1 using this distribution and n 1 is just what we have discussed is equal to n 1 P n of we can write it as m, but we can also write it as n 1 here uh, because n 1 and m are related uh, they are related to n and m and so on and so forth. So, this is equal to and this is n 1 equal to 0 to n all possible values of n 1 and uh, which goes from 0 to n and this is equal to uh, n 1 equal to 0 to n n factorial divided by n 1 factorial n minus n 1 factorial uh, n 1 p 
p to the power n 1 and q to the power n minus n 1 because uh, n 2 is nothing but capital N minus n 1. Remember that n 1 plus n 2 is equal to n. So, that is the um, average number of steps taken towards the right and uh, if you notice it that uh, there is a, a p uh, del del p um, this p is the probability to the right. So, this p to the power n 1 is equal to n 1 p to the power n 1. So, this is what you want here which means you can take a, a derivative with respect to p for this in order to get this uh, n 1 bar or the average value of n 1. Okay. So, n 1 bar comes out as uh, so we replace this thing here okay, and which can be written as uh, because nothing else depends on p it is a del del p of uh, uh, sum over uh, n 1 equal to 0 to n capital N factorial divided by n 1 factorial n minus n 1 factorial and um, p to the power n 1 q to the power n minus n 1. And this is nothing but the binomial distribution you see it here. This is the binomial distribution that you see at the bottom of the page. So, uh, we can simply write it as a bottom of the, uh, I mean uh, the binomial distribution. So, this is like p del del p of uh, p plus q whole to the power n and this is nothing but p to the power n uh, p plus q to the power n minus 1 and uh, uh, we know that p plus q is equal to 1. that is because the total probability either he has to take a left or he has to take a right or I mean right plus left uh, should be. Uh, so, uh, he has to take a step it is not that he does not take a step at, at any given instant of time. So, he takes either a left step or a right step. So, the probabilities will have to add up to 1. So, that gives that n 1 uh, average is equal to p n. So, this is a nice and important result that average number of steps he takes towards the right is the probability multiplied by the total number of steps. Okay. And similarly, uh, we can do the uh, calculation for n 2 and n 2 bar that is the average value of steps taken towards left would again come out as q into n. Okay. And uh, then n 1 plus uh, n 2 uh, which you can write it say for example, because your uh, n equal to n 1 plus n 2. So, the average values of this uh, is going to give you n 1 plus n 2 average <laughs> equal to n 1 average plus n 2 average. Okay. So, this uh, uh, average of the sum is sum of the averages and uh, this is equal to um, uh, n into uh, sorry capital N into p plus q which is equal to 1. So, this is equal to n which it should be. Okay. Uh, so, sum of the averages is equal to 1. So, uh, now what is the average value of m? That is what is the average value of the difference in n 1 and m 2 that is uh, whether he has taken more steps to the left uh, than to the right or vice versa and so on. And uh, this m is equal to nothing but n 1 bar minus n 2 bar. Uh, so, the uh, difference between the averages is uh, same as the average uh, and uh, these two I mean uh, subtracted from each other. Okay. Uh, so, what I mean to say is that if you have this and uh, it can be written as this, this is nothing but n 1 average minus n 2 average. So, what uh, holds for addition also holds for subtraction and this is equal to n into p minus q 
and uh, so this is the this uh, m average. So the average number of steps, uh, which is a difference in the average between n1 and n2, uh, is given by n into p minus q. So in a special case, if uh, p equal to q equal to one, uh, rather half, but that is uh, if we there is equal probability to take um, uh, left step and right step, and then as understood that this difference should go to 0. Okay? Uh, but in general of course that is not true that we know and um, there is uh, uh, one more important quantity called as the uh, variance uh, or the dispersion. of m which means that this uh, you have a delta uh, n uh, we get it through this delta n1 uh, square average which is nothing but equal to n1 minus n1 average square and a bar of it and this is equal to n1 square average minus n1 average square. Okay? And uh, this is your uh, variance of uh, uh, n1 and of course we will get uh, similarly we can get m or n2. Uh, so variance of uh, say for example n1 or n2 or even m uh, can be calculated in a similar fashion. Okay? And how do we get this? Uh, we ha we already know this we have to calculate this okay and uh, the way we do it is simple again uh, we have to have this n1 square average which is equal to sum over n1 from 0 to n, n1 square p n of n1. Okay? And this is same as uh, n1 equal to 0 to n, n1 square and uh, you have a n, well let me write this as earlier, uh, first let me write the factors uh, n1 uh, factorial n minus n1 factorial and n1 square p to the power n1 and q to the power n minus n1. Now once again you see that uh, n1 square p to the power n1 okay, it is equal to p uh, del del p of square p to the power n1. Okay. So we will replace it here and uh, replacing it we get n1 square average is equal to p del del p square sum over n1 equal to 0 to n, n factorial divided by n1 factorial n minus n1 factorial p to the power and q to the power n minus n1. Okay? So, this is uh, the simplified form and this is nothing but then again this is nothing but the binomial distribution and hence this is equal to p into del del p uh, square of p plus q whole to the power n and this is nothing but uh, n1 if you do the simplification it is n1 bar square plus n p q. Okay? So, this gives that uh, delta n1 uh, square average is equal to uh, n1 square minus n1 average square this is equal to simply n p q okay? and uh, as a special case if p uh, equal to q equal to half then of course it is equal to n over 4. So uh, this is called as dispersion or it is called as fluctuation either it is called as a dispersion or variance as I said.
dispersion, fluctuation or variance in n, n 1 that is. Okay. So, now if you take the relative fluctuation that is uh, you calculate uh, uh, that this is called as the uh, delta n RMS, we take the root of that. So, delta n uh, RMS divided by uh, n 1 average this becomes equal to uh, 1 by, so this is root over of root over of uh, delta n 1 square average divided by n 1 average and this goes as 1 by root over n. So, this uh, is an important uh, quantity that we will see that the relative fluctuation in the calculation of various thermodynamic quantities, uh, they actually go as 1 by root over n and as n goes to infinity, this fluctuation uh, drops out or becomes 0 which is when the result becomes so the fluctuation when it goes to 0 the results become accurate and that is why we need uh, large n uh, and this is also encoded in thermodynamics what we say as the thermodynamic limit which is defined as n going to infinity v going to infinity but the density of particles remaining a constant which means n by v is a constant. Okay. So, uh, this is very important and we need this uh, throughout statistical mechanics and uh, we can find out variance of n 2, we can do that, so this can be done and once when we do that your m becomes equal to n 1 minus n 2 or you do not need actually the variance of n 2 to get a variance of n because this is nothing but 2 n 1 minus n and uh, a delta m which is m minus m uh, average this is equal to uh, 2 n 1 minus n and minus 2 n 1 bar minus that is average minus n and this is nothing but 2 n 1 minus n 1 average which is equal to 2 delta n 1. So, delta m is nothing but delta uh, n 1 and uh, that is why uh, we have this delta m square uh, is equal to 4 times delta n 1 square and so on and then uh, this is nothing but it is equal to uh, 4 times delta n 1 square is 4 times n into p into q and uh, once again uh, if um, uh, p equal to q equal to half of course, m average does not make sense, but uh, this gives you that uh, delta m square average this still exists which is equal to 4 n p q and for p q equal to half this delta m square average uh, is equal to uh, 4 uh, I mean uh, it is p in uh, p equal to half q equal to half. So, this uh, this cancels and we get n. Uh, of course, uh, the random walk problem is nice it teaches us uh, uh, this statistical analysis how to deal with large systems and with certain probabilities something is happening with some other probabilities that something is happening. However, I mean this problem can be made more complicated we have uh, taken a one dimensional uh, sort of you know random walk that we uh, which means that uh, this uh, right and left we still continued with that. Uh, but in a 1D there is no right and left, but you can talk about ok. So, uh, you can still talk about a right and left. So, there is a right step here and there is a left step here and so on. Uh, so, in this 1D random walk then uh, we have these uh, results important results coming by and uh, we uh, uh, get these uh, variances or the fluctuations which uh, do not vanish. Uh, either for uh, the n 1, n 2 or for m whereas, uh, for if there is an equal probability for 
P and Q uh, that is taking a right step and a left step, uh, then the difference in the steps that is m average would go to 0, but nevertheless uh, delta m square average is not equal to 0. Uh, we can introduce complexity into the problem by considering a two dimensional random walk in which there will be more uh, probabilities that is going towards uh, um, east, west, north, south and so on or we could even make it more complicated by assuming that the step size uh, does not remain same. But these are more difficult problems and uh, let us just uh, stick to things which are simple than uh, simpler and easier to understand. So, let us do this uh, the next problem let us do as the coin tossing problem okay. and you will see that the outcomes of these two uh, problems are same. So, uh, consider flipping a coin n times and um, uh, you record the difference between head and tail. h minus t uh, where h is the number of heads and t is the number of tails. Okay. So, record this uh, h and t and because uh, you know uh, there is equal probability of having a head and a tail uh, which corresponds to p equal to q equal to half in the earlier problem. Uh, the uh, This quantity uh, if you call it as m uh, the average of m is always equal to 0. So, there is no point in talking about average of uh, m rather what we will uh, talk about is this, this uh, m square average. Okay. So, uh, each flip contributes uh, n i equal to plus minus 1. Okay. So, you ask this question what would be would be m n which is sum over i equal to 1 to n n i which is equal to h minus t. Okay. So, uh, this is the question that we ask um, and as I said m n average is equal to 0 because there is equal probability of having head and tail. Uh, so, uh, this is not useful. But what could be useful is the RMS value. M n uh, which is nothing but it is given by uh, m n uh, square and then we take this uh, average and then uh, take the square. So, uh, let us do it by induction. Uh, let us do after one coin flip what happens. And what we have is uh, this is equal to half into minus 1 square. Uh, so, this is for uh, this uh, m 1 square. Okay, so, this is equal to uh, plus half into plus 1 square and this is equal to 1. So, after 2 coin flips or 2 coins flip, you ask this question what is m 2 square average and this is nothing but 1 fourth. So, this is tail and this is head. So, for 2 coins it will be uh, minus 2 square plus half into 0 square plus 1 fourth into 2 square. Okay. So, this is uh, tail tail, tail uh, is uh, corresponds to minus 1 and head is plus 1. So, this is uh, head tail or tail head and this is uh, the head head. Okay. So, uh, then you have after uh, 3 coins flip, 
m 3 square is equal to uh, it is a 1 eighth um, of this 1 eighth of minus 3 square uh, plus 3 eighth of minus 1 square plus 3 eighth of plus 1 square uh, plus 1 eighth of plus 3 square. Uh, this is tail 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 for 3 flips. This is uh, 2 tail and 1 head. Uh, this is uh, 2 head and 1 tail and this is uh, head head head. Okay. So, um, and this is nothing but equal to, so this is equal to 2 and this is equal to 3. So, you see that m 1 uh, bar square is equal to 1, m 2 bar square equal to 2 and m 3 square bar, m 3 square bar equal to 3, which means that uh, whether we have m n square bar is equal to n. We have shown it for 1, 2, 3 uh, does not uh, mean that it will carry over for n when n is especially when n is large. Okay. So, we want to check whether this is true uh, and this can be seen that uh, this m n square average is uh, nothing but the RMS value uh, after n minus 1 th step after uh, n minus 1 steps plus plus the last step that is the nth step okay and uh, let us see how what this comes so it's m n square bar equal to m n minus 1 plus uh, n n this n n is the last uh, measurement that we do and the square of that and then taking the average and this is equal to m n minus 1 square average plus a twice of uh, m n minus 1 um, into n n and that average. Uh, see that uh, this uh, we are using bar, but in some text you can use an angular bracket and uh, that can also be used uh, plus n n square average. Okay. So, if you look at the middle term that is this term which is uh, the product term which is um, m n minus 1 n n average, this will be nothing but half uh, m n minus 1 into minus 1 and plus half m n minus 1 into plus 1. Okay. So, because your n is equal to you are taking the average your uh, n n that is the last uh, coin tossing would give you a plus 1 and a minus 1 with average um, uh, with this factors weights as half and half okay. and this is equal to 0. So, which means that we are left with uh, only this term and this term, this term goes to 0 and that will make things a little easier for us and that will tell us that uh, m n square average is equal to m n minus 1 square average plus 1. Now, this is equal to n minus 1 by induction and if this is true then m n minus 1 square average is equal to n minus 1 plus 1 equal to n. Okay. So, this is indeed uh, what we were thinking that uh, m n square average equal to n. So, the RMS value RMS value RMS means uh, we have used this earlier I have not elaborated it is a root mean square. So, you first take a square and then you take a mean and then you take a square root. Okay. So, this is equal to square root of m n square average and this uh, is this is nothing but the RMS of h minus t okay. and this is equal to root over of n. 
okay. And again if you take the uh, relative uh, dispersion uh, then it will go as 1 by root n. Okay. So, uh, we ask this question that uh, in, in both these cases uh, what is the trajectory like if you take n steps and have gone a distance root over n and that was the uh, question that we were trying to answer. And um, I think it is uh, clear now that uh, these two uh, problems that we have done that is the random walk problem and the coin tossing problem they have a formal similarity and the similarity says that and the relative uh, fluctuation or the relative dispersion of uh, the measurements uh, that go as a 1 by root over n. And um, if it is a 1 by root over n uh, for n going to be large uh, these uh, fluctuations will uh, disappear or will vanish or tend to vanish and uh, we would get the uh, results from statistical mechanics to be uh, accurate. So, as n becomes larger and larger uh, the values uh, of the thermodynamic variables or values of these measurements of say uh, m n or m n square or uh, these uh, uh, n 1 average or n 2 average etcetera that we have talked about for the earlier problem they start becoming uh, more and more accurate and this is the power of uh, statistical mechanics and we are going to see uh, it uh, for uh, these uh, thermodynamic systems through you know um, the concept of ensembles and so on. Mm -hmm.